Alrighty, so happy Tuesday, it is apparently, unfortunately, um, for all of you people who are joining me today. Uh, it's going to be a nice quick one on some more redstone mechanics. Uh, so I'm going to get into quick pulses and pulse extenders in this video. So you'll recall in the last video with my little concrete cannon there that I did have to, uh, what is called, quick pulse the uh, stacks of uh, sticky pistons and observers, or the pistons and observers, sorry. Um, and today I'm just going to get a bit more into the mechanics of that and how it works. So basically, quick pulsing is the act of turning a long redstone pulse, say a one second pulse, into a very, very short redstone pulse, say like one or two ticks. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, the first one is, I did mention in the observer video that observers do put out a pulse of um, one redstone tick. Um, another few things you can do is there's some little circuits you can make using sticky pistons. We actually use a sticky piston with a solid block to make a very, very short pulse. So there's two main ways you can do it. So there is this sort of setup here, where you have a repeater running into the piston and a repeater running into the redstone block. So basically what's going to happen here uh, is when you simultaneously power both of these, it's going to push the piston. The piston takes one redstone tick to push and this one will go simultaneously. So they both activate, so one activates the block initially, which will pulse uh, that redstone there, and then the second one pulses the piston. Piston takes a tick to push, so therefore after one redstone tick, it'll turn the signal back off. So it'll look like this. Let me just fire that. You can see that there is a very, very short pulse at the end there. Just fire that again. So yeah, that's, that's a one redstone tick pulse. I believe it's the same pulse length as an observer. Let's have a looky. Uh, what shall we do here? Let's do something like that. And oh, something like that, actually. Uh, I'm trying to just think of the best way to do this so you can actually light it up and see. Yeah, sort of like that. So yeah, it is. Observers put out a one redstone tick pulse, and so does this circuit here. Another little way you can do it as well is you can actually use a vertical facing piston. So it's going to be the exact same timings as little, this little circuit here, um, but it's actually going to be using a vertical piston instead of a horizontal one. So we just have that there, and we fire that. Boom. You got that lightning fast little pulse there as well. Um, this one here... Actually, both of these uh, can be used for this. So, if you don't just want a one redstone tick uh, difference uh, between your pulses, what you can do with uh, both of these circuits, actually, is you can change the timings for this repeater. So, say the repeater going to the piston here. If we change that to two redstone ticks, it's going to take a tick to power this redstone, and it's going to take three, uh, three ticks to turn the redstone back off. So, you should see that that... Yeah. You can see there is a visibly longer little pulse there. Same goes for three resident ticks, where it'll go longer again. And four resident ticks. And that's basically as long as you can get with this setup, uh, unless you run the redstone sort of like through the piston. Um, it's a bit hard to explain. I can sort of show you. You can get longer during uh, doing this as well, but at this point it's pretty much uh, useless. So we fire that again. You can just see. Oops, didn't actually connect that redstone. Uh, yeah, so that's just going to be like fractionally shorter than the button. Uh, you can do the same sort of thing with this setup here, but you don't get the versatility of that sort of uh, little clock there. Uh, so if you want, this will be a one redstone tick output uh, because you've got a one tick repeater here. And now we're going to get into another little neat quirk of repeaters, whereas if you change that to two redstone ticks, you can see that it takes two redstone ticks to turn on, and then when it's on, it's actually converting that one redstone tick pulse length into a two redstone tick pulse length. So you can see there, that's actually uh, longer. Do that again, change it to three redstone ticks. It's longer again. And four redstone ticks, even longer. So that's sort of one of the neat little... Uh, quirks about this little circuit here. Uh, so continuing on with that, um, you can also just use, if you for some reason don't have sticky pistons or you don't want to use sticky pistons, one of the other things you can do is have a normal piston but have a gravity affected block. 
So like sand, gravel, anything gravity affected that is counted as a solid block will work for that. So if we use sand, say here, this is this is kind of like one of the more pointless circuits. I don't really know why you need to do this. But you can see it's the exact same thing, and you get that neat little quirk of the sand actually falling back down. So it's a it's a funny little quirk, I guess. It's pretty much useless. I only really use this one here with the sticky piston. Um, but it's just something funny to keep in mind, I guess. Um, so basically what you're going to need a quick pulse for is there's certain... One of the main behaviors of, of observers is that they can... Um, they, they sort of have like a... It's hard to explain. They sort of have like a little redstone. Like they can only get so many pulses in like a length of time. So I'm pretty sure if you do like a an observer here and you actually have that as a very, very short pulse, so that's one reset tick. You can see that observer, it doesn't pulse twice, even though it's gonna be detecting two updates. If we put some more delay on it. You can see even as we extend that delay there. Okay, now it's pulsing twice. So when the so when you pulse an observer or pulse a block sort of connected to an observer for like longer than three redstone ticks, or three redstone ticks or longer, I should say, that's gonna pulse twice. So you can see there's actually a very, very quick little pulse there. Bang, bang. Um, so why that's important is because say, if you're using a redstone line to power an observer in a cannon, uh, you are going to want to feed your cannon with like a quick pulse, or yeah, you'll probably just want to feed it with a quick pulse to be honest. Um, because that'll be the only case where you only pulse the observer once. Uh, there are special cases where you do actually want to power the observer twice, and I've used that in, my, in some of my cans before, uh, where I actually use like a different resident pulse length to pulse pulse something twice without needing a shitload of repeaters. Um, that is one of the neat quirks you can have with this sort of setup. But for the most part, you just want a quick pulse if you're using observers. Another benefit of using a quick pulse is you can make a sticky piston actually spit out its block. Uh, so I mentioned in one of the very, very early videos that you can uh, you can do this. If you power a piston fast enough, you can see it actually fires that block out there. So it actually doesn't pull that block back. So I think it's the sort of sort of the same thing with observers. So that's a two redstone tick pulse. Might be three redstone tick pulse for the piston as well. So this might not, yeah, okay. That doesn't spit out its block there. So it's sort of like the th same three resident tick thing with uh, observers uh, with a piston here. Um, so I guess moving on from this now, uh, we'll sort of get into pulse extenders. Um, so pulse extenders are a way of actually increasing the signal length of a resident circuit. Um, so I did sort of mention in the very, very early episodes that you can use a comparator like a little capacitor like this although this isn't like a very very fine way of timing something if you want to time something very very finely and extend the pulse length uh, we could have a little setup like this where we actually have repeaters here two three and what we need to do is we need to hard power this block here so basically what's going to happen is we're going to power this uh, repeater here which is going to power this redstone here. Now this redstone is going to remain powered as this block here powers this uh, repeater, and then this repeater powers this block, and then this repeater powers that block. And you can sort of extend this all the way along for just how many ever ticks you need. Um, basically the advantage of this though is for each extra tick you sort of add in this little loop here, it's actually going to add a tick to this circuit. So currently, if we count the length of a button, uh, that's 10 redstone ticks. And then when it feeds into this block, this circuit starts powering on zero. And it'll uh, this repeater will power this block, this repeater will power this block. And what's actually gonna happen is with those two extra blocks powering that circuit, it's going to stay on for two extra ticks. So you can see it turns on initially. And when this repeater here turns off at the end, just so you can see it a bit better, just like that. So the advantage of this little circuit is you can get very, very fine timings down to one redstone tick um, on this line of redstone here. 
Uh, this is particularly beneficial for things like your sand comps, where you only want to let a certain amount of sand through at a time, and you need to time it precisely. This is how you want to do it, using one of these setups here. So, um, that's, that's I guess, like the main reason for it. Another reason for it is a lot of cannons that people use will actually use a, when they're using the comparator clock in particular, I did highlight this in the comparator clock episode. So if we do some redstone repeaters like this, we're going to set the circuit to three seconds. So currently we have it at one, five, nine, 13, 17. So we multiply that by two because it takes seven ticks, 17 ticks to turn on and then 17 ticks to turn back off. So we're going to change that repeater there to two ticks. Now, if we just take two away from that, it'll take 15 redstone ticks to turn on and 15 redstone ticks to turn off. So what's going to happen is basically when you have a setup like this, you're going to get a 15 redstone tick signal length out of this clock. So if you feed this straight into a cannon like that, you're going to get a 15 redstone tick um, signal length, which is a bit weird. So you've still got two alternatives with this. What you can do, or option one, I guess, would be use a target block, and then we'll use that, and then that, and then that. So the first thing you can do is sort of use this as a, or have a quick pulse mechanism attached to the end of this. So if you want to feed your cannon with a quick pulse, you can just use this circuit here off this clock. So if we put a lever here, and we start autoing it, you'll see that the pulse length changes from 15 redstone ticks, to one redstone tick. So you can see they've got that very, very brief pulse there. So it keeps going. And what we can do from here is say, if we don't want a one redstone tick pulse length, what we can do is utilizing all the information that I've just showed you is one, you can feed this quick pulse through this repeater here, which will make it four ticks long. And then what we can do is we can add another repeater here. So we now have a four tick long pulse length plus another four ticks long, which is eight redstone ticks. And then what we can do is we can actually change that to 10 redstone ticks. So we now have a nice round 10 redstone tick number on a circuit that's going to be quick pulsing. It's 10 redstone ticks right there. So this sort of mechanism here is like particularly handy if your cannon will only function with a certain uh, pulse length and you want to change that pulse length. Uh, I see most people um, running either 10 redstone ticks or one redstone tick, which is just the quick pulse. Um, and it's pretty uncommon to use it for anything else. I've used it for seven before, but that was in a really, really specific circumstance. Um, but apart from that, that's sort of going to be the main the main utilization of your quick pulses here and your pulse extenders. I will just cover one more thing very, very quickly with your quick pulses here. Uh, you need them for the piston observer chains. So in the last uh, episode, the one about the concrete cannon pr practical, uh, you would have seen that I needed to use a quick pulse for the chains of observers. So we turn this back off. I'm just going to angle that like that. So now that's going to be pushing forward. It's going to be pairing here. Piston. And then we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which is the maximum push limit. Get a piston. And then, boom, we have this little circuit here. So, as I did mention in the last video, this only works with a quick pulse, uh, which is why you might want to use one of these sorts of circuits here or alternatively just use the classic little sticky piece with an observer. Either any of these works as long as it is as long as it is, I think, two redstone ticks and under. So any of these sort of pulse extenders here, these will all work for it. Um, but yeah, you just basically want to make sure this piston spits out or goes up and down fa uh, fast enough so that you don't get any, any interference so this piston here isn't pushing into a solid block. So we turn this clock back on. Boom. See, all these observers are going off at once. This is a nice around three-second clock. So, yeah, 
uh, I guess in a quick little summary, this has been like a nice little, nice little concise video on the uses of pulse extenders and quick pulses. Um, next video, we're going to get nice and in-depth into the actual uh, TNT physics and the uh, physics of sand in Minecraft. Um, so we'll cover triangling, adjusting to an extent, um, and exposure in the next video. Apart from that, I'll catch you all later.